My fish fam, it's Nikachu, Merfolk Master, and welcome to the School of Fish. We're going to be learning Pioneer Merfolk from your gameplay. We've got Derp's gameplay specifically. Now, uh, before we get into the footage, we have a full league to look at. Let's take a look at Derp's list. It's basically my list, I, I believe, to a T. I think it's this exact 75. So, uh, Derp, let me know that cannot be vampires. Why we cannot be vampires? I don't know, because I am very, very close to undefeated versus vampires. So let's take a look at this footage. All right. We've got uh, starting hand. Beautiful starting. This is like a nut draw. Uh, basically, turn one, Cenote Scout. Turn two, Deep Root Pilgrimage. And then if we get a land, uh, command a Tyrant of Raska, And then hopefully we can just completely take over the game from there. So let's take a see how this uh, checks out for us. We do start off with our... Breeding pool into the Snow Day Scout. So, uh, all right, we already have a smidge of a mistake here. Snow Day Scout was revealed off of the top of the library, uh, and we left it there. <laughs> uh, that is not very good, and I'll tell you why. It's because we want to curve out into our Kamena Tyrant of Raska. Now, the reason my lists, let's get back to the list. Let's take a look at the list. There's 24 lands in this deck. Now, I've been heavily criticized that that's too many lands. People want to go to 23, 22. And I'm telling you, you should be more happy to lose from flooding out than to lose to getting mana screwed. Because l losing to getting mana screwed is the main way you're going to lose with this deck. Uh, Pioneer Merfolk absolutely wants to hit their, their second, third, and fourth land drop on curve. You want to be able to play two spells a turn. You want to be able to... Curve into your Kumana Tyrant of Araska, your Sentinel of the Nameless City. And especially, especially in this game, we got the Deep Root Pilgrimage. We are very close to, like, this is close to a nut draw with this deck. We wa So we want to curve out with Kumana Tyrant of Araska by turn three. But we're not going to be able to do that if we keep Cenote Scout on top. Like, when do we have an opportunity to play the Cenote Scout? We don't even have two green mana sources in our hand. So next turn, we'll play Deep Root Pilgrimage, and then if we don't draw a land, we can only play one Cenote Scout. So, uh, I would have dumped the Cenote Scout for sure. This deck doesn't have a problem with threat density. It has a problem curving out. Make sure you have your land drops. Now, if there were three lands in hand... Like, if I had, sorry, I had a land and play two lands in my hand, I would keep the Cenote Scout on top because we know we're curving out already. But at this point, we don't know we're curving out. In fact, we're now, like, not curving out for sure. It's not like we're uh, going to, I don't know, maybe we'll play Cenote Scout next turn. All right, so we're up against either Vampires or a Black, uh, Black Red deck of some sort. So we do play our Deep Root Pilgrimage. Situation is still not that bad, but we are not guaranteed to, um... Uh, player Command Tyrant of Araska. It's also really important that if our opponent kills the Cenote Scout, then we're not, like, the chain of doing things, like making tokens, stops immediately. Because we'll play a Cenote Scout on our turn, but we can't attack with it immediately. And if they keep killing our creatures, then we don't get any more value out of our Deep Root Pilgrimage. Okay, turn three. Can we hit our land? Our opponent played their Blood Type Harvester. We do not hit our land! So that's a pro that that that's a problem, a little bit of a problem. So now we're really choked on green mana. Um, I think here I would definitely play Cenote Scout, hoping to draw another. We have to hit our land. We have to try to find them land drops. All right. So, and I guess you can ignore this uh, window at the right over here. We played Deep Root Pilgrim. That is greedy. <laughs> I mean, we'll get to we'll get two tokens out of this, I guess. It does set up if we draw an... The problem is, like, this Cenote Scout is going to die. It's either going to die to Blood Tithe Harvester blocking here, or it's going to die to Blood Tithe Harvester just activating and killing it with its ability. So I guess I understand you want to try to get a little bit more value out of this card. But we still need to hit our land drops. Deep Root Pilgrimage is worthless if we do not have extra creatures in play, which is why I'd actually lean a little bit more harder into a Cenote Scout. By the way, if we go Cenote Scout into another random land, you could just play the Deep Root Pilgrimage. So you'd get both things on the board, uh, on the battlefield at the same time. We really need to curve out, and Deep Root Pilgrimage I don't think was the best way. Um, maybe it looks like you're using your mana the best, but it's... <sighs> After the Cenote Scout dies, these Deep Root Pilgrimages do nothing. I mean, I, okay, I do understand. If you top deck a land, Kamena actually just goes bonkers. But I think Kamena goes bonkers even if you 
uh, play a Cenote Scout instead. So they block with the Blood Tithe Harvester. They play Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and we can't even attack into this thing. We don't make we don't have any more triggers. And now again, we are hit. We are we are at Commanded Time to Raska World. I wonder if we played. Um, okay, so whatever mysterious card on top of the deck is right now would have been the land we could, or could have been the card that we could play Tyrant of Ara Commanded Tyrant of Raska. Because if we played appropriately, played Cenote Scout, dumped the other Cenote Scout, and then played the second Cenote Scout to dump another card, which would be this Commanded Tyrant of Raska, we'd be like one more card deeper in order to uh, curve out our hand. Anyway, now now Deep Root Pilgrimage is completely offline. At least if we had Cenote Scout from last turn, we could attack with it, get um, another token, uh, and then maybe play followed up with Commanded Speaker. Okay, we're going to play our uh, Cenote Scout now. Uh, fine. Jade Light Spelunker, which goes into the graveyard. That's fine, because we desperately need to get something going on here. We need to really find our lands. Uh, opponent dumps Tro uh, Croxa with um, uh, their Fable the Mirror Breaker. They play Go to the Throat, killing our Cenote Scout, which leans into what I was saying before. Like, if we don't have enough creatures on the battlefield, uh, Deep Root Pilgrimage loses a lot of value. Okay, they attack with the Blood Token. Now, we're in a bit of an awkward spot. It looks like you're leaning to blocking here, which is, like, okay. But our opponent has a lot of mana. I don't think this 2-2 is worth a whole lot. Like, if we top deck a land... Like, let's say we double block here, which is apparently what you're about to do. Well, now, like, what are we going to do with this Kameno Tyrant of Araska when we top deck our land? We're going to play it. There's only going to be one other token on the battlefield. Like, um... You can't stop Vein Ripper next turn. There's a token, there's a treasure token and four lands. So if there's a fifth land on the battlefield, like then they're gonna just play Vein Ripper and there's nothing you can do about it. I would have leaned to just take the two damage. And uh either swing back for three with our tokens. Uh or hope that we draw a land and then we can like get some get some synergy going with this Commando Tyrant to Raska, like draw some cards and so on. Anyway, we've double blocked this token. It's off the board. Uh, they followed up with Blood Tithe Harvester, uh, which can kill. I can kill a commander now, unfortunately, because there's two Blood Tithe Harvesters. Now we found our land. Now it's interesting. If that land was on top, because that land was on top, uh, if we Cenote Scout turn one, dump the creature in the graveyard, played the next Cenote Scout on turn three dumped uh the Kamana Tyrant of Raska, we would have been able to curve out with Kamana last turn instead of this turn. And now we're playing Cenote Scout instead of Kamana Tyrant of Raska because we blocked we threw away our creatures to that uh fable creature token. I would say like killing blocking the fable would make a lot more sense earlier on the game, but our opponent has just so much mana now that I just really don't care about the fable nearly as much. Okay, we're playing Cenote Scout. There's a Kamana speaker on top. I don't mind how you're curving out here, uh, saving the commandos in your hand, because if we just play a commando, it would just die to the Blood Tithe Harvester. Now we're in a bit of a weird spot. Our opponent uh, flips their Reflection of Kiki Jiki. They can make multiple copies of Blood Tithe Harvester. It's effectively like a sort of a combo here. Uh, like there's basically a removal spell every single turn. So finding an answer to this reflection to Kiki, Kiki Jiku would be great. And our opponent plays Highway Robbery. What is this? You may discard a card and or sacrifice a land if you do draw two cards and as plot. Okay, sure. Opponent has three cards in hand. Uh, and now they play. Oh, Croxa from the graveyard. I totally forgot about that. Now, good news about this situation is. We're probably going to take three damage a turn, but we do have uh, Deep Root Pilgrimage and Commander Tyrant of Araska, which is a huge combo here, which can at least block this Croxa, hopefully indefinitely. It was really interesting. They they actually made a huge punt. I don't know why they... Maybe do I misunderstand the game state right now? They threw away their Blood Tithe Harvester with Reflection of Kiki Jiki. That was like a removal spell every single turn. But I guess they didn't value it very much. They don't know that we have two Kamenas in our hand. But anyway, we're about to play Kamena Tyrant of Araska, and hopefully we can just take over this game. Um, just trying to think, was it worth playing that land right then? Yeah, we don't have Smuggler's Copter in hand. It's okay. Okay, Um, I think we're about to make a big, big mistake. Okay, did you catch that? This is... 
Uh, I briefly looked at this footage, and I found that this was a very common mistake throughout the entire league. Uh, when you have Deep Root Pilgrimage online with either a Smuggler's Copter or Commander Tyrant of Raska, you actually want to make your tokens more on your turn than on your opponent's turn when they are tapped out. So when your opponent's tapped out, try to maximize on almost everything that you want to do. So what I would do, if we uh, just scrolled back uh, like a split second, so if we were on this turn, play the land, that's fine. Right now, I would tap the Kamenis uh, Speaker. Actually, we could have tapped the Kamenis Speaker, make two tokens, tap Kamenis Tyrant of Raska to see if we would draw like a creature. We might have drawn a, like a Cenote Scout here with and play that Breeding Pool and then play Cenote Scout and get more creatures on the battlefield. Actually, we missed a lot of value. But first off, I would tap this Kamenis Speaker to make Kamenis unblockable. We'd get two tokens. And then I think from there, I would tap the Kamenna Tyrant of Araska and the two tokens to draw a card. And then if that was, that might have been a creature we could draw off of and then play off of our breeding pool. Now, the reason you want to do this on your turn, I should say, this is the main reason you want to do this. Is because if your opponent has a removal spell, they can interact with the very first activation. So let's say I tap Kamenna Speaker to make two tokens. In response, they can kill a Kamenna Tyrant of Araska. And then you are big, you have a big sad face on your face. It's terrible. Uh, so that is the main reason you want to do all of this now while they're tapped out. They cannot interact or kill your creatures. Because all of that tap make tokens, tap your Kamenna, draw a card, make more tokens. That's all stopped if Kamenna dies in between. So right now while everything is safe, you should probably maximize on everything. The only thing you could maybe hold back is if you have a Muta Vault. You might want to hold that back because that plays around potentially a Sweeper. But we have nothing to play around here. Um... When your opponent's tapped out. It's, it's also more important when you have Smuggler's Copter that you do everything on your turn. Because if you activate Smuggler's Copter on your opponent's turn, they can use their removal to kill the Smuggler's Copter. And that kills your synergy. Whereas when they're tapped out, you want to maximize tokens while it's your turn while they're tapped out. That's why I maximize your tokens on your turn while they're tapped out. That's what I'm trying to get through to everybody. Okay, so they play another one of those Highway Robbery cards. They're playing Blood Tokens. They've got... Maybe this is not Vampire. This is just Red Black Midrange. Okay, I thought this was uh, Vampires. So anyway, uh, we don't get punished. Uh, they're Fiery Tempering our Commander Speaker. We do make our tokens anyway, but if they could kill the Commander in response, you were screwed. Uh, they're drawing cards. They seem to have like some interesting synergy going on. Okay, so uh, I don't know why... Oh, did you want to take the damage? I guess that's fair. That's fine. If you drew a card with Commander Tyrant of Araska, you would have just dumped it. So, okay, oh, that's okay. You're going to block with one. Going to make some more tokens. Uh, okay, now they fatal push the Kamena. I'm surprised they didn't do that earlier. They had access to that earlier, didn't they? I think. And we have another Deep Root Pilgrimage, but we have nothing in play to use it with. But we do have a Smuggler's Copter. That's some good news. Okay, one creature and we're really on. I think we should just start sending some of these creatures. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Our opponent could do a lot of damage. An enormous amount of damage. Now maybe we should save the creatures, because every single time they uh, they can tap the reflection of Kiki Jiki to copy the Crocs, uh, they can just uh, get the ETB even though it has a it will legend rule itself away. Uh, I don't know why we resigned here. Did we resign? Why did we resign? We can witness protection. This, the shield red and I think we still have like at least another turn it's not oh it's not completely over anyway we resigned apparently because like uh we'll take th we'll take three more damage from Croc so we can chump block it and we still have a smuggler's copter to potentially block a goblin shaman anyway um we de we prematurely resigned for no reason I mean, it was bad, but, I mean, it was still playable. Her hand is like a nut draw again. A last hand, by the way, was like a nut draw. And, like, if we just c curved out with Command of Tyrant of Raska, we would just won easily on the spot. But, anyway, this hand is also pretty much a nut draw. Start off with uh, Cenote Scout. You know what? I'm leaning... Um, I'm leaning a little bit more to being playing Command of Speaker on turn one when we don't know what we need... 
like it command of speaker would just be a 2-2 two -two by turn two i think or maybe not it's not guaranteed okay it's like so the deal is if like you need to have a 2-2 two -two by turn two command of speaker is your is the jam um maybe this is not really the matchup for that like we, we don't desperately need a 2-2 two -two by turn two uh, because Cenote Scout is like mostly a turn t a two two, by turn two, uh, so, and then sometimes it's a, still a one one because we drew like a breeding pool. All right, let's see how this game plays. Ooh, Smuggler's Copter, perfect draw. Could not have, can't be happier with that. Okay, we attack for our one. We're gonna hopefully play our copter. Play the copter. Hand is perfect, really. There's nothing wrong with this. Next turn we can play Commander Speaker and a Vidalian Hex Catcher. Okay, we're gonna. Uh, crew the copter. Uh, well, that sucked, actually. Okay, so that that was sort of annoying. There is... Uh, you know what? There was an alternate line. Apparently, they've got Torch... Okay, so they... Well, we were basically forcing them to have Fatal Push. I don't, I don't hate the line that was taken, but there was a line of just passing. Um, Smuggler's Copter is undisputedly, like, one of the best cards in these matchups. And... You gotta think about like all the things they can play on turn two. Like they've got Blood Tithe Harvester. Uh, sometimes they have that one one ETB like lose a life draw card. Um, actually, I don't know if it's in this sort of madness red black mid range deck. But if they're passing the turn with two mana up, it could be a bunch of two mana removal, or it could be some uh, dangerous one mana removal for your copter. And I prefer to just preserve the copter to attack when they are tapping out because they have to sort of tap out at some point anyway i don't hate this line either because we did have a hex catcher to counter the two mana removal like go to the throat which i definitely would have done sacking the uh command speaker but unfortunately it was one mana fatal push so anyway, now they go for the fable of the mirror breaker this works out perfectly we counter it with uh hopefully yeah the command speaker and uh situation is still pretty good actually situation is still pretty good uh, we're drawing a few more lands than we would like to, but still our lands are muta vaults, and they can get into the red zone. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we're going to attack for four. Play another Kamena, Kamena Speaker. And uh, it's a bunch of dirtly stuff, but we we technically have like four creatures on the battlefield. Our opponent has nothing. And our opponent just played Go Blank, which is, complete, uh, which is a complete blank in this situation. We draw another land. I would maybe pl I would play this breeding pool untapped. Okay, hold on. I would play this breeding pool untapped because um Oh no, it's not more important yet. Yeah, okay, forget it. I was thinking uh you have to p <laughs> you'd play it so you can activate your mutavolt to protect your hex catcher from removal, but that's not important right now. Um trying to think what we'd want to counter for two I guess it's okay putting in... You know what? We are so far ahead. We have 20 life to their 5. I think I would rather play the Breeding Pool untapped to counter like a 3-mana a sweeper. So if we get back to that game, like... Uh, or does that matter? Nah, it's close. I was just I just want the ability to counter something with Mutavolt, even though I honestly don't even know what that would be. Okay, so we win game two. We're going on to game three. I should, I do think like the black mid range decks super favorable matchups for us. Super favorable. I think we uh, had huge chances in game one. Uh, we just we just wasted it. Opponent thought sees us takes our copter away immediately. Well, that sucks. Okay, Sentinel. We saw what new new the Jade Light Spelunker. Being played on turn one. This is not a good spot for Jade Light Spelunker. So I like Jade Light Spelunker because of the flexibility. You can play it on turn one if your hand is clogged with threats and you just want to have like a random one drop to help support uh, Smuggler's Copter, Hex Catcher next turn, um, to support Deep Root Pilgrimage next turn. We have none of those cards. You know what we have? Lands. So I actually think it is better to hold off on our jade light spelunker just play land to pass and then wait turn either turn two if we don't have anything to do on turn two then play jade light spelunker like a bad silver gill adapt uh or wait turn three four or five like to the point where we have a bunch of lands and we have a huge jade light spelunker get a lot of value 
value. This is just a one mana one one, which does nothing in this matchup. I mean, a blood tithe harvester will just block it. Uh, it attacks into nothing in their deck and has no synergy with what's going on in our hand right now. So it is basically uh, sort of dead. So we're going to attack for one. See, like, we don't even have anything to do on this turn. Like, so I would prefer play Jade Light Splunker this turn. It's not a bad turn for Jade Light Splunker, honestly. It's not that bad. And then next turn we can play uh, Sentinel the Nameless City. Well, okay, so they they played Fatal Push on our Sentinel, which is a gift because that's a very good removal spell, and that was a completely useless creature. So that was that's good for us. Blood Tithe Harvester comes out, uh, which is fine because it's complete. But, you know, uh, I should say if we go go back, it's not insane to um, use your Eaten by Piranhas here. It's mana efficient. Uh, if they make another blood token somehow, they can kill our Sentinel of the Nameless City, uh, which I, I would like prefer to be in, uh, indestructible. So I don't think it's crazy to play your Eaten by Piranhas here just to be mana efficient. Uh, on the other hand, it is fine to hold back this Eaten by Piranhas because there are bigger things to hit, uh, like Shieldred, for example. Uh, so I understand holding it back. Uh, also, but also, there is some reason also to just throw it out there so that you don't get hit by Thoughtseize. Uh, they got that Go Blank card, which can eat up your hand. So anyway, being mana efficient is also useful. So anyway, uh, we don't play our cards, and we're going to play Sentinel of the Nameless City, which, by the way, this is not a terrible line either. Now we have two eaten by Piranhas, two of them. But we're getting a little choked on mana now. Okay, so uh, if they have to crack their blood token on their turn there's a huge sign of weakness i don't know what they're looking for they did dump a croxa into the graveyard but it's a huge sign of weakness because they're they're curving out oh i see okay it wasn't a it wasn't as huge of a sign of weakness they just needed to uh enable fatal push but still they they felt the threat of the sentinel of the naval city was way more dangerous than curving out which i guess they just can't do right now they're stuck on two lands um, we are attacking with this Muta Vault. You know what? I don't like this. I would like to just curve out with our Hex Catcher and throw an Eaten by Piranhas on this Blood Tithe Harvester. Like, we're getting choked on mana. Like, we just don't, we can't curve out the way you're playing this game. I would just pass and then play Eaten by Piranhas on the Blood Tithe Harvester. We're not even racing this thing right now. It's like, like what are you going to do? Play Hex Catcher? And, like, even better would have been to play Hexcatcher and sack the Mutavault, and now we're sacrificing our Hexcatcher to defeat this Fable of the Mirror Breaker. All right, so Sentinel Enable City is great. Um, here, we're going to play land, and I would pass, definitely. Uh, we could hit, get hit with Go Blank, and then we lose all our cards. So, at the very least, we should uh, Eaten by Piranhas, this Blood Tithe Harvester, and they played blot out i don't even know what that is is that a card blot out some sort of removal spell for five three mana target opponent exiles a creature or planeswalker they control at the greatest mana value among creatures and planeswalkers they control interesting all right that was a big creature uh okay so now we get back to the game and they attack again for three i would definitely in by this like this thing is attacked this one too many times Okay, uh, Deeper Pilgrimage, great way to make a comeback here. Ooh, okay, I would... Oh, I think I know what you're going to do. I was going to I was gonna map the uh, Muta Vault, but I guess mapping a Pilgrimage token is not bad either. Because these pil Pilgrimage tokens are indestructible, basically. Uh, what did we have on top of our deck? We had Witness Protection and we dumped it. Yeah, that's fine. We already have an Eaten by Piranhas in our hand. We don't need more of these effects. All right, so we can make a big comeback here. A big comeback. What is this, Croxa? Okay, Croxa. Oh, yeah, Croxa sucks. Croxa sucks. Maybe we should have anticipated that. I, I totally forgot about the Croxa. So we need, a, like, an extra card in our hands. We might have wanted to map. Well, we couldn't map twice. Could we map twice? Then maybe we had to keep the witness protection on top. Oh, well. To play around the stupid Croxa that was going to come out potentially next turn. 
All right, we got Smuggler's Copter, which is very good. It's very strong in this spot. To play our Copter. So we're going to take three damage from Croxa because we can perpetually block it with um, uh, these Merfolk tokens. Oops. Croxa attacks. Fable. Okay, Fable is fine. We do get a witness protection. That's great. I would still prefer to crew copter and like draw a card and then see what happens. Maybe I like I don't know if we can draw anything better, but I would still like like to see what my option was. Um I think we can attack for 6 here. Don't I don't think we're attacking for enough cuz if we attack for 6 and they don't block, they go to 7. I think we have we're I think we're the we have the initiative not them anymore. So I think I would rather not be on defense here. Uh what else? Yeah, I think I just prefer to not be on defense here. If they want to block with their blood tie then the goblin to uh, token, I think that's okay. They have 3 cards in hand. I suspect that they are a little bit choked on mana. They discard another Crox and go blank, which is completely useless here. Well, Shieldred sucks. Shieldred is bad. Because that also makes uh, Smuggler's Copter, like, way worse. But on the plus side is that we can still make a lot of tokens. I wouldn't... Okay, if I were... I would definitely play Cenote Scout here because if we draw a land, then we could exchange the land for like a fresh card. And also Cenote Scout is like worth another pilgrimage token, right? So like if you loot here, let's say you just loot into another creature. I think that's just like a bad use of like our mana and our resources because we're just throwing away a creature into another creature. This is like our Silvergill Adept. I think we should have played Cenote Scout here. We drew another Cenote Scout, so nothing changed. Unless uh, unless you're looking for something incredibly specific. Uh, just wondering, was it worth throwing the breeding pool on the battlefield? I don't think so. We don't want to be empty-handed, right? We want to have cards in our hand for this um, Smuggler's Copter, so we can put fresh cards into our hand. So our opponent is putting a big board on the battlefield... It's getting overwhelming. Oh, also, we met, we missed a token with uh, Cenote Scout. Same situation. Our opponent's tapped out. Make as many tokens as you possibly can with your copter. Uh, we, and we missed a token there. Unless you wanted to protect, wait until your next turn. Or unless you didn't want to expose your Smuggler's Copter. But it's going to get exposed this turn anyway. Because we're definitely going to attack with it. Uh, we are so close yet so far. Now, the Command of Tyrant of Raska is pretty good. Because that is a means of... And by the way, we don't need to draw cards with Smuggler's Copter. That's not mandatory. So, Kamena could deal an extra few points of damage. We're so close to going wide here, too. We're in a... We're not in bad shape. Okay, hold on. Like, we're not in that bad a shape. Because we can make a huge army with Kamena Tyrant of Raska. They don't have any good attacks. Because we can make a lot of big gang blocks. Or are we going to die? No, maybe the Reflection of Kiki-Jiki, unfortunately, is a bit too late. They can play Reflections of Kiki-Jiki, copy the Croxa, put a random thing in play to make us discard a card. We can't. We're going to go to one, and then we're going to die to Shieldred. So I guess that is... I guess that's it for us. That's the end of our reign. We should probably have a few more tokens on the battlefield, though. Oh, here comes Fiery Temper. Blast our face or something. Well, close but no donut. Think slightly mismanaged resources. Um, so, you know, that's it just goes to show, like, these little inches that you gain with this deck, they're all really important. There's a lot of little micro decisions with Pioneer Merfolk that makes up your, like, total win rate. And I think we completely butchered game one. Um, game two is fine, and in game three, definitely could have done a little bit better. Uh, in fact, actually, if you think about it, if we witness, sorry, eaten by piranhas, this blood tithe harvester, a long time ago, 
uh, we would have an extra six life. We'd be at seven, and we would be in a position to maybe come back and win the game the following turn. But at the moment, uh, we took way too many hits from this Blood Tithe Harvester. Don't think we curved out well enough. I should actually mention that versus vampires, you want to be mana efficient. You want you don't want to be in a position where you are... Not only do you want to be mana efficient, you want to be, be able to play like more than one spell a turn. Because if we're just going to be one spell for one spell, they beat us. Their one spell is almost undisputedly stronger than our one spell a turn. So being able to play multiple spells and making the best use of our mana when we can, um, I think is important in this matchup. So we draw a card for the turn. But you know what? That's not going to be the card that kills us. It's going to be the one we get from our Kamena Tyrant of Araska. All right. So that was match one. Very winnable. Definitely very winnable. I think if the game one was won, then we would have won the rest pretty easily. And now we're up against Evolve MTG. Hand is perfect. Why are we taking two damage? What was the point of that? What was the point of that? That seemed completely unnecessary to me. Like, at the very least, play Botanical Sanctum on turn one. And then if you want to play Breeding Pool on turn two, but you don't have to. It's not like we're going to be playing... I guess you wanted to play Mutavolt turn two with the option to attack with it on turn three. But that's so insanely unlikely with this hand. Um, I think we shocked ourselves for absolutely nothing. Like, what if we, we could have drawn an island and got the same result out of it, right? And still make Kamena Speaker uh, a bigger creature. But we'll see what happens. Like, I'm, like may, I have nothing against playing the Breeding Pool on turn two. But to give yourself that option. Because we're definitely going to be playing Botanical Sanctum either on turn two or turn three. We might as well did it on turn one. So now we've got the Deep Root Pilgrimage. Not a bad start. Uh, very unfortunate. Our opponent played uh, Fatal Push. Honestly, I would have preferred Copter here. Because Copter on... So my f usual pat play pattern is turn 1-1 one, one drop, turn 2 Copter, attack, turn 3 Deep Root Pilgrimage. I think that would have worked so much better. Because A, you play around like the random Fatal Push. But B, Copter is actually more important versus Black Decks than Deep Root Pilgrimage is. And now that you've taken this line, you are so far behind. Um, you're really far behind. Not only that, even if you attacked and got a token... They could have still played a removal spell on turn two, and you still are not doing any... You have no follow-up pressure for the next few turns, because you just have a 1-1 one, one token in play. Um, which actually makes me think that if you were going to play Deep Root Pilgrimage here, you should have played the Mutavault, so that at least on the following turn, you could activate Mutavault, tap Mutavault, and then play Hexcatcher or Smuggler's Copter, so that you can keep the... Once... The way I like to think about Deep Root Pilgrimage with this deck is once you start making tokens, you want to be able to make tokens every single turn. If there's any line your opponent can take to stop that chain, I don't think it's worth it. Or I would say it's it's rarely worth it. Like It would have to be a very specific situation, a very specific uh, line. But uh, as I see it, I would have definitely played Copter. I would have attacked with Kamena Speaker first. They would have taken the two damage. I would have played Copter um, and then we are setting up a potential Deep Root Pilgrimage in the future. Uh, I, we still might not play Deep Root Pilgrimage by turn three, by the way. We might play Hexcatcher, Sentinel of the Nameless City. And then eventually, when we get the Deep Root Pilgrimage out, then it's going to be a bomb. It's going to be explo They can't even deal with it. Like, they're tapped out. We got some creatures. We got Copter. We play the Deep Root Pilgrimage, and it's all over. But now, because you've played it so early, they've undermined it with one single removal spell. And um, very, 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 very tough to get back. Uh, because we're now basically doing nothing this turn. Like, the whole turn has been taken off. Okay, we do play our Copter. I wonder if that... That's not really... The, honestly, that's not the most mana-efficient thing we can do. I would have played Sentinel here. I'd play Sentinel here to play um, Copter Hexcatcher on the following turn. I think that would have been just better. Because now you can't play two spells uh, a turn next turn. You can only play one. So we are curving out very poor. See, like now you you got the right plan now, but a turn behind. If we played this copter turn two and deep root pilgrimage, uh, or or sentinel turn three with deep root pilgrimage and hexcatcher by turn four, then it would have been perfect. I guess what you're going for is just hexcatcher next turn. 
Yeah, it's just not Matt. It's just not good enough. I think you should have played uh, Copter into Hexcatcher on turn four. Then that would have been perfect. That would have been absolutely perfect. Now, that being said, this curve out has been pretty good. It's not bad. All right, we got a Cenote Scout to go find our um, uh, Yavimaya Coast, which can now be converted into some fresh cards with our Smuggler's Copter. So we were in the driver's seat. You know, we got we got here in a really clunky way, but we at least we got here. So here, I would definitely, 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 definitely play Sentinel. It's the most man efficient thing we can do. Tap the Sentinel to make another token pass, and then just pass the turn. Alternatively, I guess you can go. Well, you do have other options. You could pass the turn, I guess, and then go activate, tap, mute a vault, make a token, play hex catcher. Um, anyway, let's see what you do. You just okay, you pass the turn. I still would prefer to tap uh we're like we're we're right now in a war of just trying to get things going. I don't think there's any blowout card our opponent can make. So I just want to I just want to curve out effectively. Um, although I understand Sentinel of the Nameless City, not high on the priority list. There's two Death Touchers on the battlefield, but still, uh, it's a strong card. Uh, it can, ma it makes tokens, damn it. It makes Explore tokens. So our opponent gets a 1-1 one, one lifelink creature. We're going to put a Hexcatcher in play, basically make the board indestructible, which is fine-ish. Um, okay, we don't block. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, okay, so this is good. Now, so now, when you have hex catcher out, you have more room to activate your copter and all this other stuff because you can protect your hex catcher with uh, all your tokens. So we should have an unbeatable board here. Like this, like with two pilgrimages, this should be impossible to lose. It should just be impossible to lose. We threw away another copter. I actually don't mind keeping the other copter, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it is our, it's just, it's like currently our only reliable way to push a lot of damage. Um, yeah, it's our only, like, we will just easily attack for six in the air and close the game out really cleanly. Uh, whereas Sentinel of the Nameless City, first off, we can't even cast it. And second off, yeah, you don't even, yeah, you don't want to cast it. And also, it's not a good attacker here. Although it is a random enabler for Pilgrimage. But, I mean, you're not casting it. You're not playing it. So I would actually kept the Copter, dump the Sentinel, and then uh, crew the Copter with uh, Cenote Scout. Again, I would prefer you tap the Cenote Scout and um, make your Copter a creature on your turn. I understand you have, like, a million. I don't even know why we're blocking these things. Like, we're the aggressor here. Our creatures are worth more than theirs, I think. Because we're just going to wipe out all these tokens for no reason. We're also going to be really vulnerable to removal spells after we, we wipe all... We can afford to take this damage. I don't like this block at all. This is the Preacher of the Schisms card. Attacking for two. There, it's a 2-4 Death Touch. So we, just, we just lost everything. Now we don't have any tokens to counter anything with our Hex Catcher. And on top of that, I think those tokens were worth more... Because of, uh, what's it called? Um, we are, we're going wide. Like, we're making, like, what, a billion of these 2-2 two, two tokens. Every single time we tap a merfolk, we get two grizzly bears. Between uh, Cenote Scout and the Mutavault, we were putting, like, eight more power on the battlefield. And we can just go wide and race our opponent easily for the win. So now they play Soren. I assume we're just going to counter this. Uh, but we could add a much bigger army anyway. Uh, I like this, actually. I like how you're countering it first before activating the Mutavault. So get them tapped down. Now activate Mutavault in response. And now tap it, make tokens, um, and counter the Soren. So we should still be winning, but this is like a really clunky way of doing it. And uh, the more mana they make, uh, the worse all these other cards are going to be. We have another deep root pilgrimage. Okay, there's got to be a point. We got to stop playing these pilgrimages, like, and get another sentinel out. Um, I think, like, let's let's just do the math here. And oh, I haven't. Okay, there's three pilgrimages out. We can make three creature. We can tap three creatures. That will make nine tokens. Whereas if we played activate mutavault, tapped it for two tokens, played sentinel. Tap that for another two tokens. Okay, it was eight versus nine, but we would have Sentinel out for the following turn. Um, 
I think I still like having the Sentinel out, but whatever. This this line works. Oh, we finally got rid of this other thing. We finally got rid of the Sentinel. Again, uh, I'd prefer to just make all the tokens on our turn. Okay, we win this game. Yes! We win a game! We've done it! Again, another thing to remember. While they're tapped out, make as many tokens as you can. Uh, you can hold off on Mutavault. Mutavault's the only one. Because holding off on Mutavault is fine. Because if they play a sweeper, if they play a sweeper, then uh, you can make a comeback by activating the Mutavault, tapping the Mutavault, and uh, making more tokens. In that case, it doesn't matter. We have a Hex Catcher. We can counter all their sweepers. But anyway, that is just, uh, just a thing to remember. Our hand is... Our hand was not bad! What was going on here? What, what happened there? The hand was not bad. Okay, so our first hand is... Copter, Kamena, Sentinel, Sentinel. This is a keep. You don't have a turn one play, but there's nothing wrong with this hand. Like, A, a Copter is like the best card in the matchup. B, Sentinel's not far behind. It's a big, chunky creature. That gets value with Explore. I like it. And Command of Tyrant of Rask is also a fine card. These are all cards that are A, hard to kill with Fatal Push. And B, are out of range of the, like, um, Blood Tithe Harvester or the Burn Spells because they have 4 Toughness. I think this is a this is an easy keep, even on, even on the draw. I think this is an easy keep. Alright, so we mulliganed and we double. Well, let's look at that second one. I don't even know if that second one was worth throwing away. Um, let's get to that. I want to see that second hand. It went by so quickly. Oh, we had no lands. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Let's find a mulligan. So now we, we literally have like a very similar hand as last time, but it's just a lot weaker. And now we get hit by Thoughtseize, which doesn't help either. It's like another reason why you just want to keep random seven card hands full of good cards. Um... Here, I wouldn't mind the Jade Light Spelunker on turn one because you have the turn two Hex Catcher, but still, it's like a really weak play overall, so I, I really like that it was held back here. Okay, so we have the Blood Tithe Harvester. I get, I would play Jade Light Spelunker there on uh, and to explore. Uh, I don't think it's worth holding up to hit the Soren. Um, I mean, yeah, you got the Soren, but we're not in a really we're not in a really good spot either way. At least I don't think so. If they don't play Soren, you're like in really bad shape. Just throwing out a Hex Catcher is just not dealing with the board at all. So I actually I would have preferred to play the Jade Light Splunker last turn and then just get screwed by this uh, Soren, if that was even the case. Sometimes I'll just play Soren and uptick it, you know? Look, they're keeping their Blood Tithe Harvester. They want to throw it away for nothing. For nothing. Uh, all right, we got a Cenote Scout that found a Jade Light Splunker on the top of the library, and we dumped it. That's fine. Keeping is pro. Yeah, I don't like keeping it. We might as well just play Commander Speaker at the very worst. At the very, yeah, at the very worst. We got a Deep Root Pilgrimage, but we don't got any blue mana. We got no blue mana here. All right, it's just a stare off. Instead, we got a bunch of two twos versus their two twos. But their 2-2s two are better. Seems like they're flooding out. They're not doing anything. They might have some removal spells in hand, but they don't want to spend it on a Grizzly Bear. They're waiting for a more critical creature to hit. But I would guess our, our opponent's hand is pretty empty. I think our opponent has a lot of room to be aggressive, though. But they're just opting not to, which is fine. Okay, we got our Sentinel out. You know what? I would... In this situation... I think I would rather play the Deep Root Pilgrimage first because we can just attack with a random 2-2, two, two, right? I think uh, Hive of the Eye Tyrant becomes a 3-2. I think that's what Hive of the Eye Tyrant is. Uh, oh, it's a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, forget it. Okay, we can't attack with anything then. I take it back. It's a 3-3. Three, three. We can't attack with anything. Unfortunately, I have Bitter Triumph. They killed the Sentinel. They thought seized the pilgrimage away on the humanity. Oh, the fishmanity. 
They make a Blood Tithe Harvester, now they got this removal combo online. The removal combo is online. You're gonna need buy Piranha, it's a good draw. Very, very, very good draw. I don't, okay, I don't like... <laughs> whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Why, we have cards in our hand. Why the hell are we using our Explore token? Okay, hold on, I wanna go back a second here. Uh, was it here? No, 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 it was a little bit further. Oh, no, 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 it's, no, no, yeah, it's a little bit earlier, it's earlier, it's earlier. I, I think this Explore to token line is just greedy. Because if, if there is a creature on top, you can't play out your hand. You can't play the Eaten by Piranhas, and you can't play your Kamena Speaker. When, like, we have things to do, alright? I start exploring when I have nothing else to do. If you got cards in your hand, play the cards in your hand. So you're going for some sort of upside of like, well, if we draw land, then I can play both these cards. But we have the lands to play both these cards this turn. Let's wait and hold off on this explore token. Let's wait later. Um, because we absolutely need to play this eaten by Piranhas. And we know our opponent also has a lot of hand discard in their deck. Uh, actually, I don't know if they have a lot of hand discard. Can't remember. This is this is a different deck from round one, so it may not have like Croxa or um, that blot not blot out uh, that wipe out card where discard two cards like wipe the graveyard. But anyway, I would prefer to play Commander Speaker with our Cavernous Souls and then the Eaten by Piranhas and then uh, play the ex use the Explore token on the following turn when we have open mana up and we have nothing else to do. That's where I like to play my Explore tokens. But when I have cards in my hand against a hand with against a deck that can discard stuff from my hand, I want to get my hand on the board. That's super super important. So now our opponent plays Archfiend to Dross, which means we're screwed. Or we in a, we are in a lot of hurt. That's a six six flyer. It's big, very very big. Um, and now I would love to play the Explorer. Uh, to uh, love to explore now. Now that we know what we are in danger of, this is a very, very dangerous card. All right, Fatal Push. Archfiend of the Dross gets, does it get bigger? No, no, it just lost an oil counter. All right, they're being aggressive. We are dead lost here. There's very little way of us coming back from this. Very little way. I don't mind how the um, Eaten by Piranhas was played in this game. It's like, because there's just nothing else we can do. We got to deal with that reflection of Kiki Jiki. All right, we're going on. The, we go. We do go to game three, though, everyone. We do go to game three. And uh, probably we would have had a much better chance of winning that game if we just kept our. Remember, like the biggest mistake actually in that last game was mulliganing, because the hand was fine on turn one. You don't need, especially versus a deck with a lot of removal, like. Or a good chunk of removal, like um, Rakdos Vampires. You don't need, need, need a turn one play. Uh, you don't need it. It's nice, I like it, but you don't need it. Okay, this hand sucks. This has Witness Protection and five lands. I don't like it. Okay, this hand, we've mulling it. This hand's great. This is the nuts. I would... It's actually hard to play, though. I think, I guess I dump the Cavern of Souls and hope we draw land. I like to have all three lands to make sure that we curve out into our Kamana. But because they are like a Thoughtseize deck, they'll probably like rip some random card out of our hand. So keeping Witness Protection is too important. So, uh, yeah, I guess we have to dump a Cavern of Souls. Which I bet is going to happen. Why would we throw the Kamana away? That's like a combo card with Deep Root Pilgrimage. What do we do that for? I don't get it. We can easily go like turn one Cavern of Souls, turn two Deep Root Pilgrimage. We can play Witness Protection and hopefully turn three Command of Tyrant of Varaska. I guess you're a little shell shocked. I guess Derp was a little shell shocked of uh, losing to what's it called? Not curving out earlier. So there's the there's the Thoughtseize. Like for for like all attrition reasons, we should keep more threats in our hand than the lands. And there's hope to top deck a land in the next few turns. Alright, now we got nothing. 
Now we got not. Well, at least we buffed up our Kamena speaker. That's the good news. Okay, our opponent shocks in a Blood Tithe Harvester. I would just slam this Witness Protection on it immediately, and it's immediately threatening. We can keep our pressure going. Yeah, I don't mind this. So now we're drawing sort of bad, but we should have, like, one extra card in our hand here. You know what I mean? We should have had, uh, probably, they probably would have kept, let us keep, I don't know if they really let us keep the Kamena, Tyrant of Raska, or the Deep Root Pilgrimage, but we should be up one more card. So they play Sorin. They put Vein Ripper in play. Situation is absolutely abysmal now. Very, very bad situation. Uh, probably if we kept the hand... Uh, probably if we mulliganed properly, we would still lose this game. But our opportunity to win was probably in uh, match... Sorry, game two of this match. So we're getting hit really hard by this Vein Ripper. Uh, and we're also we're drawing pretty poorly, but we drew like three straight lands from here. Oh, we we've uh we've resigned apparently. Did we resign? Yeah, we resigned. We're done. We're done with that game. All right. Well, that was that match. That was that match. All right. Let's get into the next one. This is all for educational purposes, people. This is all for educational purposes. All right. We have uh. We won the die roll. It's close. I probably keep... Who won the die roll? We won the die roll. Yeah, I probably keep this. Mutavald is a threat. And the Boseju is just like a piece of removal. It's a very weak hand, though. I would definitely throw this away on the draw. Uh, so the, the idea would just be like... Breeding Pool, turn one, Kamena Speaker, Mutavolt, turn two, Jade Light Spelunker, and between our next two draw steps, like, if we can get, like, one more decent threat, whether it be, like, uh, Deep Root Pilgrimage, Kamena's Tyrant of Raska, uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City, Smuggler's Copter, this hand is great. This hand is fine. We just, like, need, we just, basically, this hand is just missing one random thing, and I'm hoping Jade Light Spelunker gets us there. Uh, anyway, Mulligan. I, I don't hate the Mulligan either. I understand it. This hand is actually completely fine too. And I would just dump a Kamena because we, we have two legendaries. And this is totally fine. We're up against a Gigantha deck, which means... Uh, Gigantha with Hive the Eye Tyrants? What kind of deck is this? Okay, we go start off with Smuggler's Copter, which is totally fine. Another Blood Tithe Harvester. Okay, that's interesting. So they had, they revealed Gigantha. That means they don't have... It's like another Vampire. I think it's a Vampire's deck? Okay, what can they not have? They can't have Vein Ripper. They can't have Shield Dread. They can't have Arc Fiend of the Dross. So it's just a completely different deck. A completely different deck. Don't even know what to expect here. Okay, we have Jade Light Spelunker, Hexcatcher, and Kamena Tyrant of Araska. I don't know what to do here. I guess... I guess Witness Protection. Because I'm assuming... There's no big... I, like, I don't even know what the big bomb out of this deck is if they have Gigantha. Because Gigantha says you can't have more... The spells in your deck can't have like more than like uh, two of the same mana cost. You can only have one. I'm leaning to think we should witness protection this Blood Tithe Harvester and place Jade Light Spelunker for one. Hopefully draw a card, like draw a land, and then um, crew it with Copter. But I think there's more than one way to play this. Oh, so we're playing Jade Light Spelunker for nothing. Oh, I don't like that at all. Why didn't we attack with our Copter? We could attack with a cop. We missed three damage. So we played a Sp Spelunker for nothing. Not ter Not great. Honestly, not in love with that. I think we should attack with this copter. We missed three damage for nothing. And, like, maybe... Like, you don't even have to loot if you don't want to loot. You don't have to loot. It's a May ability. So our opponent plays Fable. Which is... It's just going to suck all around. Why are we activating the copter now? What, to block the Blood Tithe Harvester? I don't understand that. Are we blocking? No! 
This card, we have the witness protection for this card. I'm going to reiter reiterate again. Smuggler's Copter in the black red mid these black red mid-range decks matchups is the nuts. It's like the best card because as we just keep drawing lands, we keep filtering them for like the good stuff. Our opponent doesn't even have Shieldred in their deck to like uh screw us over. So anyway, we're we're like doing exactly what our opponent wants. If they could, they would just sack this Blood Tithe Harvester for a Copter. Instead, we're blocking the cop we're blocking it with our Smuggler's Copter. And we're now we're throwing away the other Smuggler's Copter. Look at now look at our board. We have a 1-1 one, one versus a deck that is just meant to have these bombs. Like bomb, bomb, bomb after bomb after bomb. Like how are we gonna compete with that? We had a great turn we had a great opportunity. Jade Light Spelunker for once, witness protection, this blood tithe harvester, and then attack with our copter and just be completely ahead on the board. And if they play Fable, I wouldn't even care. So now we're attacking for one instead of a lot. Like also, hands like this with Kamena, we like need more stuff on the battlefield. And we have nothing on the battlefield. Here's another fable. Uh, we're, we're sacking our hex catcher for. See, uh, Kamana desperately needs like a lot of creatures on the battlefield to be even remotely useful. Otherwise, it's just a three mana two four. All right, let's see if this three mana two four can get there. Hostile investigator. I don't need. What is this thing? Let's bring it back. It is when airs the battlefield, target opponent discards a card. Whenever one or more players discards one or more cards, investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, okay. So we have our we're gonna lose our Baseju, so we might as well Baseju our opponent's high um eye of the hive tyrant over here. It seems like a pretty good line. Uh we don't, which sucks. Okay, well now this is the wrong time because we have to discard our Baseju. We're doing this too late. And now they get to uh investigate, I guess. It's gonna trigger. Yeah, so we now, if we Boseju'd while the hostile investigator was on the stack, it won't get this investigate trigger. So now we did that out of sequence. So now they have an extra card basically on the battlefield. Okay, let's see how we can, let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, they sack their blood token. Uh, with that land that they have. Okay, so we we're making our command unblockable. But again, like this is just a 2 4. It's basically a 3 mana 2 4 the way we manage this game. Hazaret! Well, we're dead. It's a very interesting card to have. Oh, at least we got the witness protection. That god needs some protection. <laughs> we need to protect the god from something. Uh, but we're desperately down on cards. Opponent, like, sacks their clue token for um, a Blood Tithe Harvester. Uh, I mean, they're just so far ahead. So I guess we're on defense now because we might as well be. They fatal push our creature. Yeah, things. Uh, anyway, we had a great hand. Like, we had a great 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 hand this game but we threw away our best cards don't think we played our best our cards the best way i mean there there if you want to play around fable which is fine there are still other ways of doing that um anyway not in love with how that game was played especially the throwing away of the smugglers copters copter so copter is good enough for a few reasons in the red black matchups first off it does also it of course it loots cards away but it's unblockable three damage three damage is a good clock two damage is not such a good clock but three damage into three damage into three damage that is like that's a steady recipe for someone to like die pretty quickly and we had two copters in that game one of them being discarded to the copter. I think if both those copters were on the battlefield, there's like no way we lose. All right, we have a pretty reasonable hand of a bunch of dorks. Uh, we find a witness protection on top. We keep it. That's fine. Especially since our opponent seems to have like a lot of uh, really powerful cards. Okay, we're going to attack first. Like it. Yeah, that's, that's some good sequencing. And then next up, we are going to follow it up with another Cenote Scout. Oh, you know what's an interesting... Okay, so the, actually, in this game, this is where I 
think Kamena Speaker would... Oh, I can't tell if Kamena Speaker or Cenote Scout would have been better on turn one. Because we're on the play. We don't have anything in our hand. Um, I think maybe Kamena Speaker turn one to guarantee a two a two power creature by turn two would have been better than Cenote Scout. But I'm not sure. Oh, we got blown out by Legion's End, which says exile target creature and opponent controls with... Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Did we just not play our creature? Why? We attack for two. We play a Cenote Scout. We show Smuggler's Copter. We play Breeding Pool Town. I mean, maybe that was a misclick because we should just... We absolutely should dump this Kamena Speaker on the battlefield. We absolutely... I don't think there's any re... Uh, I don't think there's enough reason on the play. I mean, maybe you're trying to play around Anger of the Gods. I don't think there's Anger of the Gods in the deck. I know there is a sweeper at four mana. And you know we have Smuggler's Copter on top of our deck. I think we should just be aggressive. Uh, anyway, we play our Command Speaker now. And we play our Smuggler's Copter. Our opponent plays Fable. Uh, well, we drew very well. Because after this Deep Root Pilgrimage hits the battlefield, I mean, it's almost very close to GG. Not sure why we're tapping that Muta Vault. Off of the uh, off of the for to play the deep root pilgrimage because we just that's just a token that was wasted unless you want to I actually don't know what the hell's going on here we are just down oh you want to keep the Besaju in hand because you would have to play the Besaju to activate the muta vault that's fine uh I would keep the copter copter is too important. Like again, you can you can race them pretty well. This come on, like what do you want more? You want this you want this cop you want this Boseju to blow up their fable or you want a copter? Like they already got enough value out of this already. If this Fable of the Mirror Breaker flips into what's it called? The Reflections of Kiki Jiki, you can just play the Witness Protection. I absolutely want that second copter to cr crush. Crush, 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 crush them. Also, it'd be a great way to follow up if after a board wipe. So, with two copters, you only need one creature with a Deep Root Pilgrimage. Because, let's say they let's say they sweep the board here. On the following turn, or I would say the following following turn, you can uh, activate Muta Vault, crew copter. It'll create a Pilgrimage token, and then with that token, you can crew the other copter. So, anyway, the copter plan would just wreck them. In my opinion. They're getting attacked by this Goblin Shaman. Yeah, sure. Take two damage. We're ahead. There's the Thought Seas, which can take our Witness Protection. Ooh, the Hostile Investigator again. Does it say we have to discard cards? I guess it ETBs you have to discard a card. Oh, I get it. It makes you discard a card, and then uh, you it ruins your life. I got it. All right, let's attack with this Copter. Oh, man, we're going to discard cards. That's okay. I am I completely approve of this. Okay, so this is a situation where um that's another that's a absolute classic situation here where we should just dump our hand. No, no surprises. Like let's not let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. They're tapped out. Okay? They're tapped out. I would like to activate this muta vault. I want to tap it for a token. I want to play the Hex Catcher. I want to tap the Hex Catcher. Uh, crew the Copter to maximize. We get two more tokens on the battlefield. And then we don't have to worry about anything our opponent does next turn. All right. So while your opponent is tapped out, maximize on the tokens that you can make. Because now it's just, it just gets really awkward. Uh, you know, flashing in this Hex Catcher. It's not super terrible. Because we can just play this hex, we can play the hex catcher, and uh, if we want to crew the copter, then we uh, we can defend it. Why are we making a token? We can make another token by tapping the hex catcher with the smuggler's copter. We're, we're like one token down here. We should have one extra token this turn. So we need to max. See, we like we need to maximize those tokens every. Uh, we need to maximize the tokens every single turn. Every token matters. Could be the difference between winning and losing the entire game. 
Okay, I hope we uh, attack with almost everything. Okay, I like this. Okay, they're attacking our copter with fatal push, but now we're just making uh, a bunch of tokens in response to kill to counter the fatal push, and we win the game. Okay, that's great. I believe we won that game. But we're going to game three now. We're going to game three. Thoughtseize takes our copter. See how you see how good that copter is? They snapped it off. They didn't even think about it. Oh, we played Commander Speaker. Love it. Oh, they played Bone Crusher Giant. That sucks for us. All right, Jade Light's Blunker. Turn two. Love it. Great, great everything. And what? There was a copter on top. That's great. So so far this is turning out pretty well. And I don't mind. Uh, yeah, witness protection. This is very mana efficient. We attack with our Jade Light Spelunker. Love it. Get in that two damage. And then we play Smuggler's Copter. This is a very mana efficient turn. I like everything in this turn. Okay, our opponent plays Fable and the Mirror Breaker. That's fine. Um, we can block the token with our Kamena. Mm, you know what? I don't... Okay, hold on. Level was, uh, I can't tell if playing... So we had the option. This went a little too fast. So we had the option. Play Kamena. Or play Deep Root Pilgrimage. Can we get back? I want to go back. Okay, we, uh, we we just drew Deep Root Pilgrimage. What is the best thing to do here? Now, I do get it. If you play Deep Root Pilgrimage, it's easy value. Let's see. You play Deep Root Pilgrimage. You crew the Copter. You get a token. Next turn, Command is really good. Okay. Okay, I, 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 I like it. I like it. I don't mind. We're attacking for three. Clean damage this turn. Uh, we dumped Eden by Piranhas. That's fine-ish. I do like keeping the Hex Catcher here. I guess Kamena and Hex Catcher are very, both very strong. They play Strangle to kill our one creature in play, but we all know that we have a lot more where that came from. Uh, they get in for three-ish. Take three, but we should be winning this race. Should be. Okay, why are we not... Oh, you, you're trying to not leave yourself vulnerable to removal. Maybe we should have played Hexcatcher instead then. Hexcatcher, use Hexcatcher to crew Copter. The token will trigger. Oh, but they have three mana up. Okay, let's see how this goes. Maybe this line is not so bad. There's three mana up that can kill our copter. And it would have killed the copter, that's for sure. So now we're crewing the copter. Unfortunately, they have another fatal push. Well, that just sucks all around. That was very rude, opponents. It's very rude to that was a very rude line. Okay, we blocked and killed the Bone Crusher Giant. Don't have a lot of things to do here, unfortunately. Uh, you could have attacked into the Reflections of Kiki Jiki. Uh, if they don't block, great. If they do block, then you flash in Hexcatcher and hopefully kill it. Because, like, we're not blocking here, right? Oh, I guess we are blocking. Okay, I guess you had a plan. The plan succeeded, too. Yeah, they didn't want to look at our hand for one mana. We dead here, aren't we? Oh, yeah, you've got Boseju for that uh, fable. All right, well, we got some value out of the Boseju. Uh, I, now I think we're stone dead. I don't know if there's a whole lot. Our opponent's hand was very, 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 very good. Like, how much removal did they have? They had one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four. Four. They had four pieces of removal. No, sorry. One, two, three, four. Well, they had four pieces of removal and one Thoughtseize, so it looks like we weren't meant to win this game. Uh, and our hand, I guess, was just a little a little awkward. Uh, but we did miss some stuff, right? Like, didn't we, like, miss an attack with uh, Smuggler's Copter at least once? But I'm not sure. That was a tough game. That was a, that, Even if I played that game, that would have been really tough. 
Our hand is the nuts. I have to say, all your hands have been great so far. They've been all insanely good. So we've played Cenote Scout to find a breeding pool. Ooh, we're up against humans. Or some sort of... Maybe it's not humans. It's just some sort of aggro deck, though. We'll play another Cenote Scout into another Cenote Scout. We found two lands! We found a Mutable and a Cavern of Souls. That's awkward. Phone plays Thalia. That has no power here. At least not with the hand that we have. We got Deep Root Pilgrimage. I like that. Um, but I, I like the Sentinel of the Nameless City even better. So the, the main way to beat these decks is you just slam your Kamena, Tyrant of Araska, or the Sentinel of the Nameless City. And you just stop them immediately from doing anything. Like, they get just can't attack anymore. If they can't attack anymore, you buy a lot of time. So they have Thalia's Lieutenant and a Dauntless Bodyguard. But they can't attack into you at all. So, so slowly, we can get this Deep Root Pilgrimage out. Oh, and we just drew Copter, too. Um, Why? Oh, we played uh, <laughs> Witness Protection on the Thalia. I guess that's okay. That's not great value. I guess that's okay. I think this other this recruitment officer is a more important like target for the witness protection. I think it's a lot more important. What is it like four mana? Look at the top four cards of your library. You can reveal a creature card and I think put it in your hand or something. But by turning off the um, okay, the, uh, by turning off the Thalia, we can play deeper pilgrimage or Copter. Copter was the absolute superior card to play because you can attack with it next turn. Right? I think you need to prioritize Copter in play. So, they, like, Copter is just the better card than Deep Root Pilgrimage almost all the time. And it's just it's just the better card in the deck, period. The fact that this thing got unbanned is, like, bonkers for Simic Merfolk. Um, so, if you played Copter first... Like, we're not going to make any token this turn, right? Like, we didn't attack. Uh, completely fair enough. Uh, but if we played Copter first, then we have the option to attack next turn for three. Uh, whereas we don't have any option to make any tokens this turn anyway. Alright, we got a thousand, another Thousand Lieutenant. Um, another Recruitment Officer. So things are getting pretty big. Pretty big. Uh, I would... Ah. I sort of want to I sort of want to chump block that attack because you can't take too much damage, right? If you take too much damage, you die. Uh, you also want to put your you also got to be con cognizant. They can like God's willing name pro. Actually, I don't even know what the name here. Pro green or pro blue. Uh, and then there's some opportunity for you, them to like alpha strike you. So as long as your like life total is pretty high, uh, you're safe. But every creature on the battlefield is worth an extra pilgrimage token, so I understand not blocking at all. It was either a chump block the Thal's Lieutenant once, or don't block, period. Okay, we have another Lord in play. They attack with everything. Oh, sorry, not God's Willing. Uh, brave the Elements. I was thinking of... Uh, choose a color. White creatures you control gain protection from the chosen color until end of turn. That's a mistake on their part. Like, they should attack, wait to see how we block. Because if we block with all the green cards, then you brave the elements, you completely blow... We, we get completely blown out. But if they uh, if we tap all our creatures to make blue tokens, then they brave the elements named blue and we can't block. So they punted there. So now we're just going to make a bunch of tokens, block everything, and they look like a bozo. Yeah, okay, we're gonna make a bunch of tokens. And uh they won, we win. <laughs> they said, alright, that was good enough for me. We have infinite blockers, we can deal a bunch of damage. Uh our hand is great. All of our hands are great. Oh wow, look at that. Great top deck. Lucky top deck. We top deck a one drop. Although uh I think in that spot. If we don't top deck Commander Speaker, we do play Jade Light Spelunker as a random one drop so that we can play C C Copter on turn two. And then we would have that one drop to at least tap to block the co uh, block with Copter. So if we don't draw 
Kamena Speaker, then I would... This is definitely the type of hand that I would play Jade Light Splunker as just a blind creature. Just a 1-1. Because it has synergy with our Copter and our Hex Catcher. We are attacking with... Eh, I don't like this that much. Is that... Eh, maybe it's okay. It's sort of aggro. Again, I like Copter here. So the, the thing with the humans... You have two options. Like, if you're going to be aggressive, you need to be aggressive in the air. I don't mind attacking. But then after you attack, just don't do anything. Just get in your one damage. But there's a point where the board gets gummed up. And it's going to happen immediately, right? It's going to happen immediately. So the only way you deal damage is with Copter. Like, that was the... that Copter and Kamana Tyrant of Rask are, like, some key cards in this matchup to push damage consistently throughout the game. Um, Kamana, Kamana Speaker is not going to do that. Beyond turn two, you're, the board is going to get really gummed up, and then you just can't attack at all. So there's already a 3-4 in play. Let's see if you attack. Oh, well, maybe you could. You have a bunch of witness protections. All right, we, we are continuing to attack. Uh, I don't mind playing Jade Light Splunker again for nothing. Uh, just as a one-drop. because our, So remember, Jade Light Splunker is good as a one-drop when your hand is clogged with cards. Jade Light Spelunker is bad as a one-drop when you uh, your hand is very threat light. So when your hand is like a bunch of lands, you know you're going to curve out to your fourth land immediately. You don't have a whole lot of things to do. Don't play your Jade Light Spelunker on turn one. Save it to play it on like turn five. But this is a great scenario where we're not going to, we're always going to like tap out every turn. So when are we going to play this Jade Light Spelunker? We might as well, we might as well just put it onto the battlefield as like 2-2. Two, two. Just randomly block or gang block or maybe counter something or just you know add add to the board in some way um, for later turns. So our opponent goes brave the elements. Oh, that's cute! They can brave the elements, name blue, and it uh, rips off the witness protection. Great line. Now portable hole comes and takes our um, Fidelian hex catcher. Now we have nothing. And the Thalia comes down. That's actually another reason to get the Smuggler's Copter out early, just to play around the Thalia. Not that it's like a big thing to play around. Okay, our opponent attacks with a lot, a lot of stuff. Coming in with everything here. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. And uh, I guess you decide, you know what, that's too much stuff. Gonna have to concede that one. Their hand was pretty good. Like, they had portable. If we play Copter turn two, they had portable hole. I think they had portable hole later. Okay, what was the first hand? We gotta we gotta look razor close at all these hands. Okay, um Yeah, one lander on the play, no good. I would throw it back. Uh even if this was Cenote Scout, I wouldn't want to gamble it. Okay, this hand is the hand second hand was a bit better, if I saw that correctly. Let's take a look at that second hand again. No, that was the second hand. Because I, I think it was a one-lander with Cenote Scout. Maybe it's still worth throwing away. Hold on. Okay. So we got... Uh, oh, we have a few things, actually. So it's a one-lander with Cenote Scout, a bunch of two drops, and Jade Light Spelunker. You could keep this hand, and I'll tell you why. One, one landers are more playable when you have more one drops to play and jade light spelunker n not a sexy one drop honestly but it's one drop is a one drop so you go turn one to note scout dig for a land uh if you find it great if you don't uh well you follow it up with if you still don't find a land on turn two uh you can play jade light spelunker and so long as you're sort of adding to the board every turn it's not terrible uh that being said i, th I think i would risk it here because your copter is very, very good in this matchup, it's, it's supposed to be. Uh, I would value, I'm supposed to, I would value copter way higher than uh, Derp is valuing copter throughout this entire league. Um, anyway, it's if you want to throw this away, I guess that's fine because you you have a fine, there's a lot of five card hands honestly that would curve out very well versus humans too, but I think this hand is capable. Uh, this hand, by the way, is great. This hand is very, very good too. 
we go turn one Snow Day Scout into Deep Root Pilgrimage that's, that's broken. Uh, Hand's actually just busted. So they have to deal with this Pilgrimage or they're doomed. Or the Snow Day Scout, I guess. Yeah, I would just slam this. I would attack for two. I'd have no problem. If they block, that slows them down a ton. If they don't block, we get a lot of synergy. Okay, they got Hopeful Initiative. Uh, Portable Hole, that sucks for us, but uh, it is what it is. Our hand is still very strong. Uh, between the Muta Vaults and Kamena, it's very good. They play Adelaine again, but no good attacks here, so no triggers. We got a hex catcher. Uh, so this hand is getting very good, very fast. I don't know what to do here. I guess we're just gonna. Just trying to think. Did we have any attack? I guess we didn't have an attack. I guess we just sit back and just try to draw cards. That's all we've got to do. And it's not bad. It's not a bad plan. Unfortunately, our opponent just said get lost. Now what do we do? Maybe play hex catcher, draw a card. Then maybe sack three creatures to keep this? Okay, whatever. We definitely have to draw a card. And then see. Why didn't we draw a card? What the hell happened? So what we can do is flash in our hex catcher, activate Mutavault, draw a card, so that we aren't falling super far behind in this game. I guess the idea now is to like... Flat, like surprise block Adeline or something maybe does that even work like maybe it works let's see what happens okay they are tapping out for this big attack and they are going to lose the Adeline for sure all right we have a 1-1 one, one. I can't help but feel like Something was mismanaged here. But anyway, the blocks were fine, I guess. Got rid of the Hopeful Initiate. And we also... Uh, I, I like that you didn't block Mutavault. Uh, and the reason I like that is because they now have to perpetually keep activating, tapping mana to activate the Mutavault in order to get in, an, get in an attack. Okay, so now what do we do? We're still... I'm actually surprised how this game play, is playing out. You don't want to double block, I guess, because of the fear of uh, Brave the Elements. I guess that's an okay thing to do. Not sure why the Mutavault was activated. That seems pretty strange. All right, we draw a Smuggler's Copter, which is perfect. I would have kept the land, though. So, like, you played you played the land. You always want to have, like, a land in your hand for that Copter. There's, like, no point to playing that Ottawara. Or is it Ottawara or the other thing that we did? And now we don't have a land to discard. Okay, this... Uh, ooh, we're getting hit by a Ganja. I was about to say, we've got the Hex Catcher to deal with a lot of get lost, brave the elements type of stuff. Uh, maybe brave the elements wouldn't work in this case, because we have two colorless creatures blocking. Uh, but then they play a Ganjo. Deals four damage, start attacking or blocking creature. Very unlucky. Like, the very very few times that we get to do anything with this copter, it gets blown up. So we lose the copter. But board state's pretty good. Like, they don't, don't seem to be doing anything. I bet we could have even got aggressive. Like, we could attack for... I don't know. Maybe we don't attack for nine. I don't mind being patient and being very careful. I wonder if you could have blocked this Adeline with the Kamena Tyrant of Raska. Because if there's Brave the Elements on blue, um, this Adeline doesn't die, right? But if you double block, uh, Adeline can only kill one creature, I think. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, Brave the Elements doesn't matter because you can just sack a creature with uh, a Hex Catcher. So that's fine. I think this game's being played very well. I think you're doing great here, Derp. This actually might even be... It might even be played better than how I would play it. So we drew a bunch of cards off of our Jade Light Spelunker, which is great to have in the late game. And we have another Adeline. Is that the third... It's the third one? Is that the third one? 
Or is that the second one? Because I see another legendary in the graveyard. Oh, maybe that's uh, Thalia. No, it's not Thalia. Okay, now we have another Smuggler's Copter, so we're drawing pretty well. Although we are digging to the stuff with, like, Jade Light Spelunker. Again, we do a big gang block. Okay, this is definitely the third one. There's the third one. There it is. All right, we got to attack. Finally! <laughs> we attack with this Copter in this matchup. And this is why it's good, because, like... The game is such a, like, pass the turn back and forth sort of ordeal. But the card that, like, closes the game out is this Copter. And, of course, we have a bunch of lands in hand. Now it's converting it into actual fuel to uh, win this game. We don't have to, uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about Brave the Elements too much. We do, we do have uh, a colorless creature on the battlefield. But we do, we got to be careful. Okay, Portal Hole is back. It's going to take away our Copter, I assume. Oh, it's taking away Hexcatcher. Um, slightly understandable. Okay, we're blocking this thing. We're gonna, oh, do we have lethal? I think the idea is that we have lethal on the crack back. Oh, because we're at, uh, being at two life really sucks. But we drew a uh, hex catcher, so that's good enough for the win. Okay, I think that, ha I think that game was played pretty well. I like that. That's. I give a thumbs up to that game for the most part. Maybe my idea of drawing a card with Kamena was a little ambitious. Because it would tap us down. Uh, and you were properly on defense. And I have to admit, when, you, when you're up against an aggro deck like humans, um, you want to be on defense. You need to keep your life total nice and high and dry for the most part. And I think actually you did a really good job of that this game. Articulated, you, you really showed... How to be on defense with Merfolk and then turn the corner when you have the option. Like when you, when you eventually drew your Smuggler's Copter. Start chipping away damage. Because that between Smuggler's Copter and Commander Tyrant of Araska, that is the way that you would eventually win this type of game. Uh, with that, we're going to look at your round five. And away we go to our last and final game. All right, we lost the die roll, which is not... Not great, but our hand is fine. We got like one drops. We have like two things we can do on uh, turn two, and we also can fill up our top end with like uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City and probably our Cenote Scout or or even our Jade Light Spelunker will help us curve into that third land one way or another. So I really like uh, how our our hand is. Uh, now we do not need. Okay, so here's an interesting thing here. Um, this is where I would definitely, definitely, definitely play Kamena Speaker because I would really like to start getting the beat down by turn two with, uh, with Kamena Speaker. Uh, so if we play Kamena Speaker turn one and then we play two random Merfolk, we will have a hundred percent certainty that we are going to be attacking with a 2-2 creature by next turn. Now, on top of that, I don't even know what we're up against. Like, what is this? Can candy Trail? It looks like it's some sort of black mid-range, maybe a food sacrifice deck. I'd like to hold back our Cenote Scout. Like, we don't, need, we don't even need to get this land right now because we're definitely curving out into our three lands. Like, we have all the lands we could possibly want. Uh, I would like to hold on to the Cenote Scout so that later on in the game we can play it and then uh, try to explore into something that we we know we need. Right now, we don't even know what we need. Frankly, we're like we're certainly going to be playing like uh, like we're just going to be playing like two creatures next turn, probably. So I would prefer to go Bark Channel Pathway into Kamenda Speaker, which also, by the way, uh, saves us some life. We did not know if we needed to commit to this uh, breeding pool just yet. See, like, the thing is, if we hit a land off the Cenote Scout, it would have been so bad, because we'd only be attacking for one next turn, whereas Kamena Speaker definitely attacks for two. All right, we attack with our uh, Scout. Uh, I would do nothing except play Bark Channel Pathway and play two, yeah, two creatures. Looks great. We got uh, one of our creatures Fatal Push. That's fine. And our opponent follows it up with a Sentinel of the Nameless City. All right, so it's going to be the Sentinel versus Sentinel Battle. Um, hmm. Smoker's Copter throws a wrench into that. 
I guess I'm fine with casting it. Like, I was trying to think, like, what should we do here? Could we play Sentinel in the Nameless City just to block the other Sentinel? But it doesn't work so well because our opponent could just, like, crack a, uh, what's it called? Crack the uh, map token that it created, and then our blocks sort of suck. Like, we could, like, double block with Kamena Speaker and Sentinel of the Nameless City, but uh, it would I guess it would be a trade. But they would have got the explore on. I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm pretty happy with this smuggler's copter play. Uh, I like it a lot. And they go beseech the mir mirror, which is like, what is it? Like a four mana tutor if you sacrifice an artifact. Bargain. Search your library for a card. Exile it face down. Then shuffle. If the spell was bargained, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost if the spell's mana value is four or less. Put the exiled card into your hand if it wasn't cast this way. So I guess we're... Um, Tutoring something onto the tutoring something immediately cast, which is oh spelunking. I have, I have no idea what we're playing against here. I'm not familiar with this deck. So we get to play extra lands. They come into play untapped. Uh, I think spelunking has some other abilities. And um, yeah, it looks like oh what happened here? Oh, what oh, bit of a glitch. Let's get back to the spelunking turn. Okay, we were going to surveil with our underground something in my bobber. We put a rec uh, Reckoner, Reckoner Bankbuster into the graveyard. Fun attacks with their uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City. I guess the double block is slightly risky. I guess the double block is slightly risky. Yeah, no blocks. But we our, our attacks are not bad at all. Oh, and we top deck the Witness Protection. Oh no, why are we not attacking with the Smuggler's Copter? Or I guess you're just putting them on Fatal Push. You know, when my opponent has more mana up, I prefer... Like, it's I, I think it's less risky to attack with Smuggler's Copter here than it is to block with two Kamena Speakers. Because, like, if you're wrong... You lose your Smuggler's Copter. When you double block the uh, Sentinel, if you're wrong, you lose two creatures. That's terrible. You may not come back from this game. Uh, so I would I would prefer to attack with your Smuggler's Copter. Oh, there is actually a good reason not to. You have nothing bad in your hand. So all you're doing is missing out on technically one damage. You know what? Maybe I like not attacking with the Smuggler's Copter. You just basically, you're not going to get in one damage. Or I guess there's a, and, the, and actually the opponent did have the Fatal Push. So we're, like, because we don't want to throw away anything in our hand. Although we could improve some of the cards in our hand. Uh, for example, Jade Light Splunker could be something else. But anyway, we're going to, uh, that I think was played relatively well. There was, I don't think it was a super high risk to pl activate Smuggler's Copter and attack. But it wasn't a huge gain either. So attacking with the Kamena Speakers worked out perfectly. So that was a good play. Okay, opponent plays another Spelunking after we play our uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City. Opponent Thought Seizes us. We have nothing left. So now, I mean, this is exactly where we want to be. I mean, our opponent's just a stone cold, close to stone cold dead lost here. Uh, okay, we sh revealed a uh, Vidalian Hexcatcher on top of our deck. Um, okay, so what I would rather we do here is map something other than the Sentinel of the Nameless City. Because we are... I mean, uh... I guess you could do it afterwards. Maybe it's not a big deal right now. Okay, so you map it. You attack. Uh, I would actually prefer that you map the, the Copter, to be honest. Because the Copter is unblockable and will deal a really good chunk of damage over the course of the game. Now, I don't mind mapping the Sentinel because if our opponent plays another Sentinel, now we can attack into it because it would be a 3-4 and we have a 4-5. So our opponent plays a Bank Buster, finds nothing, and then uh, scoops that game up. So actually, you know what? Yeah, I really like that line where you attacked with the two Command Speakers and did not actually activate the Copters. That was actually, it was pretty clean. I think, I think if anyone t activated the copter and attacked, that would have been fine too. I wouldn't have blamed them, but uh, the way the game played, uh, even without how the game played out, the I think attacking with speakers wasn't a bad line either. Although I should say, if we had a land in hand back on that smuggler's copter turn, 
I would have leaned toward attacking with the smuggler's copter, but because we had two gas can cards in hand, there was no reason to actually loot. Okay, we keep a very, very nice hand. I do not know exactly why we have Disdainful Stroke here. Um, now, Disdainful Stroke's not terrible. I, I don't really like playing Counter Spells versus Thoughtseize decks, if you know what I mean. That being said, this is a hard counter. It's not like Spell Pierce where they can sort of play around it. So even when they see it, they, like, even if they see it, they can't play around it unless we're tapped out. But that's the problem. Like, if we have mana up, they'll always play around it. So I'm not a, not a huge fan of... Like, I'm not a huge fan of bringing in counter spells versus what I'm assuming is sort of a mid-range deck. Like, I don't think they did anything insane with their... What's it called? Beseech the Mirror. They got a spelunking, for crying out loud. Or maybe I just don't know what's in this deck. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. But generally speaking, versus attrition-based decks, like, you want all your top decks to be live... So if we are, if you're on an empty board and you're, you know, you're like hoping to top deck a creature and you top deck disdainful stroke, well, you're gonna be pretty sad. You're gonna have a big sad face on you. Oh, they have another fatal push. They're playing. I mean, I don't know what their curve is. Okay, so we're past the turn. That's fine. I can get behind this. You know, I don't think it's terrible to actually play the pilgrimage either, because if you play pilgrimage on your turn two, then on the following turn you play mutavolt pass. And then, uh, depending on what they do, you then activate Mutavolt, tap Mutavolt, make a token with Pilgrimage, and then you play your Hexcatcher. And then you're sort of protecting your Hexcatcher by the time it comes into play. Whereas here, uh, well, we're transparently going to be playing a Hexcatcher. Oh, it's a Lotus Field deck. Uh, I... mm, yeah, maybe. Okay, uh, Pilgrimage here is better. So I don't I I can't tell if we're up against a combo deck or not, but pilgrimage is definitely better in a um uh what's it called uh in pilgrimage is definitely better to play first over smuggler's copter if you're up like against a combo deck and you need to get the tokens out to uh, basically support your Vidalian hex catcher. Uh, we played a Breeding Pool tapped. I would actually have preferred to play the Muta Vault. Because I don't think we need the green mana. And just in case we absolutely need to counter something, we could have had access to tapping. Um, or you could even play, I guess, the Breeding Pool untapped. But I prefer to play the Muta Vault. Uh, and then we could tap the Muta Vault, add a mana, and sacrifice the Muta Vault. Just in case. How the hell did that happen? Oh, they just tapped three lands. Uh, oh, they tap. They tapped our. Sorry, they tapped our Lotus Field and killed our Vidalian Hexcatcher, and we had no chance of countering. It was impossible. Uh, are we? Oh, we're holding up Disdainful Stroke. In that case, I would have preferred to have played maybe Smuggler's Copter last turn, so that we can get a. I think a better chunk of damage. We would have had just one token out, but I think that's. I think that's okay. And then on following turn, Smuggler's Copter, I think it's stronger. Another spelunking, which we can't counter. I don't even know what we're holding this disdainful stroke up for. But like maybe maybe Derp knows things I don't. Why did we waste the mana? Don't we have a land drop here? You could have floated the mana, played a land. Don't we have a land? I swear we have a land drop. And then we could have played Smuggler's Copter, and you're still holding up Disdainful Stroke. Nothing wrong with that. I feel like we're not using our mana properly here. So, like, like we just burned a mana for not... Oh, I did it at the beginning of... Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, I think they killed the Mutavolt at the beginning of Combat Step. So, there was no way of making use of the mana. Sorry. Sorry about that. Or, I guess there was. The Mutavolts were tapped imp uh, improperly. Hold on. So, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. There was a cleaner way of attacking. There, we were not playing around removal, apparently. Yeah, I see the problem now. Okay, hold on. Let's go back. So this is their turn. This is our turn. So the correct line to do is activate Mutavolt with Breeding Pool. Then go to attack. Because we only need one blue, one colorless up anyway. But we ended up, like, tapping a Mutavolt... For no reason, 
Like we, we're not. I don't think we're representing anything, but we're not. We're definitely not playing around removal. So what could have happened here is that if we had the Mutavault untapped and we tapped a Breeding Pool, we could tap this for mana, get a token, uh, activate the other Mutavault, and then we can attack with it and then uh, make another token, uh, attack for two and make another token. So we would have made two tokens that turn. But instead, we are down a creature and we are down two damage uh, and we had the land drop anyway. Okay, another Spelunking enters the battlefield, which is to nothing. Um, ooh, baby. <laughs> why are we... Why are we going so win more here? See, like, if I'm going to tap out and play anything, it is absolutely the Kamena Tyrant of Araska. Absolutely. And then next turn, play your uh, Deep Root Pilgrimage. I guess the idea here is you activate Mutavault, and then you can make two tokens. And to be fair, I think this line works too. But I think I would still prefer to have Command of Tyrant of Raska on the battlefield. Although Kumana would be a little bit more dirtily. Uh, ooh, Path of Peril. Which, by the way, I don't think... Let's go back to Path of Peril. I don't think that kills Kumana. And you would... Well, I wouldn't say you'd draw a card because you'd probably be attacking with your tokens. Path of Peril. I think that's... Uh, just all creatures get minus two, minus two. Sorry, destroy all creatures with mana value 2 or less, uh, which Kamena uh, gets out of range. Which is why Kamena Tyrant of Varaska and uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City and so on are very good in these black mid-range matchups. But also Kamena would, I th Kamena would also help re just regurgitate everything back onto the battlefield because we can just easily activate and tap these Muta Vaults for more tokens, including tapping Kamena um, itself. Also we have also we have smuggler's copter. I think it's very reasonable to have a smuggler's copter on the battlefield instead of this uh deep root pilgrimage. It's really not clear that holding up this disdainful stroke was worth anything in this match at all. But let's see. Alright, now do we get to play our stuff? See, the thing is if you play Command of Tyrant Tereska first, you get to attack with it this turn. Like that's the difference. Whereas, if you play Deep Root Pilgrimage, like, it doesn't really matter all that much when this Deep Root Pilgrimage was played. Like, you, because you could play it right now and still get the same amount of tokens on this turn. So, it's actually more important to get your, like, Smuggler's Copter, Command is out first, Deep Root Pilgrimage second. I mean, unless you're curving out, like, you have uh, turn two Deep Root Pilgrimage into turn three, Command of into Verazka. But this looks like a really, really bad spot for our opponent. I mean, they're stone cold screwed. Uh, we have unblockable creatures up the wazoo. We're going to draw like a ton of cards. Uh, not even sure why there's an attack here. Pretty sure you could freely block. Like, I don't think you lose anything. I don't think there's any pump spells coming out of this deck. And now you're just going ham, and you're missing cards. Like you, you get, like you did this actually in another game. Remember, C Command of Time to Raska has this ability: tap three Merfolk you control to draw a card. You can tap the three Merfolk uh, to get an extra card out of it. But maybe you just think that you've won, so like who cares? Okay, so we can like pump up. You actually probably get attacked with well, maybe not everything. But anyway, this game looks pretty locked up. Another spelunking. I have no idea what this deck does. I'm missing something. Maybe this disdainful stroke was super important. Oh, maybe we're gonna see it right now. No, it's another spelunking. Four spell. We have got millions of spelunkings today. For another lotus field. Now what? Oh, scape shift. Okay, if you knew that, then I guess this is good. I guess keeping disdainful stroke in the deck. What are they scape shift for? What do they scape shift for? I like I have no idea what on earth is going on over here. So um, uh, anyway, I think uh, this game was played relatively well. I would have sequenced maybe the creatures a little bit differently. I guess disdainful. I don't know when is the best time to hold off on disdainful stroke. Is it immediately? I would have to see what this deck list looks like. But uh, definitely, uh, you smashed derp smashed the last two opponents, the humans opponents, and the scape shift deck. 
Uh, I think there are a lot of chances, a lot of room for improvement in the other black mid-range decks. Because, like I said, this deck just eats up black mid-range. I think we had a lot of chances, a lot of mismanaged opportunities. Uh, and, yeah, I hope, I hope people better understand how to manage this deck. I, I would think the most important things to go over again, that you want to curve into your... Uh, what's it called? You want to curve into your thir third land as soon as possible. So that is a priority. Uh, you So like your Cenote Scout, go look for your... Don't be keeping more threats than you need to. If you need to get to your third land drop, go for the third land drop. I highly prioritize Smuggler's Copter before Deep Root Pilgrimage in a huge ton of games. Uh, because that is your beat stick to deal damage immediately. So, like, you, you play your Copter on turn 2, and then you start dealing damage by turn 3, 4, and 5. The damage adds up. And I would try to lean, not always, but lean to playing Murf Deep Root Pilgrimage, like, as the very last thing that you want to do after you play, like, a lot of creatures. Uh, I don't think there was enough value, especially if you have, like, no immediate tokens to be made. I would prefer to be playing uh, Deep Root Pilgrimage a little bit later. There's also the risk that when you play Deep Root Pilgrimage early and they kill your, like, one or one creature that's on the battlefield, that you get, like, nothing out of it. You have, you now have no value. It's basically wasted a turn. You now need to wait, like, two more turns before you can attack, if you are allowed to attack, to activate that Deep Root Pilgrimage again. Well, I hope everyone liked this. Smash like and thank Derp for submitting this footage. And, um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching the, uh, watching the series. I know you like me analyzing people's gameplay, and I think it's really insightful for everybody, because I'm sure you're making a lot of mistakes that Derp's making here. So anyway, thank you very much. Smash that like button, and I will see you next time, Fish Fam.